The weather has been getting extremely warm for us recently, so today I will be sharing five new dinners with you that require very little to no heat at all. So these dinners are going to be perfect on those super hot days when you don't have a lot of energy to make dinner. Let's go get to my kitchen and let's go get started. To kick us off today, we are making these black bean burritos. So into this medium sized bowl, I'm adding in two 14 ounce cans of black beans. These black beans are drained and rinsed. I'm just mashing them up a little bit with the back of my fork. Now we'll go ahead and add in a tablespoon of taco seasoning, then add in one drained can of Rotel. Next, add in a half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese and give this a stir. Now that it's well combined and looks like this, I'm going to set it to the side. I am going to make the avocado salsa now. So into this bowl, I added one red onion that is diced along with an avocado that I diced, a fourth a cup of salsa. You could use any type of salsa. Then the juice from one lime. This juicer is so easy to squeeze. I'll have it linked below for you. Then add in a tablespoon of minced garlic along with a teaspoon of salt and give this a stir. This salsa is so good on any burrito you can make like chicken burritos really any burrito this is just like delicious to add to the burrito but I have my medium-sized tortillas right here I am just going to add some of that black bean mixture just add it right onto the tortilla next add some of that avocado salsa just roll up your burrito and then you could serve this up we have had over 95 degree weather here in Utah recently and these black bean burritos are like the perfect dinner to make when you don't know what to make for dinner and you don't want to heat up your house a ton and you don't want to put a lot of effort into dinner either. Now we're making this avocado corn salad. So to get it started, we're going to begin by cutting up our vegetables. I just cut up an English cucumber, next a half of a red onion, one cup of cherry tomatoes, and about one avocado. Over to this big bowl, I'm adding all of those vegetables in there. Next, I'm going to be adding in a drained 14 ounce can of corn, or you could add in two ears of fresh corn if you would prefer to do that. I just had a can of corn on hand that I wanted to use but this recipe is on page 34 in my cookbook and it is in the sides and appetizers section but to make this less of a side and more of like a main dish today I am actually going to be adding in two cups of cooked shredded chicken so I don't have that chicken in the recipe but to make it more of a main dish I just wanted to add that chicken in so I did next I'm adding in a teaspoon of salt then after you add in your salt go ahead and add in a half a teaspoon of pepper and a half a teaspoon of dried basil go ahead and give this a really good stir and then I kind of realized I forgot to add in the lemon juice so I added in the juice from one lemon this really gives it some great freshness and then after you give it a stir you could serve this immediately or you could refrigerate this for later but like I said before I added chicken into this you could add in different veggies if you'd like you could subtract different veggies this recipe really is versatile and I do want to let you know for a lot of the recipes in my cookbook you could seriously make them your own like I said before you could add ingredients subtract ingredients but we absolutely love this avocado corn salad in my house it is so good now we are making these Italian Cobb salad subs and if you have never had a sub like this before you need to try this. I'm starting out by cooking up six strips of bacon to this pan on my stove. I added a little water in and that will help the bacon cook evenly. Now I'm going to boil up three eggs in my instant pot or you could boil up your eggs however you choose to do so. I like to cook them on high pressure for five minutes and then do a five minute natural release and then keep them in cold water for about five minutes and then that will help the shell come off so easily. I have a loaf of French bread right here. I'm just removing some of the excess bread inside and that will just add more emphasis on what is inside of the bread and not just the big loaf of bread. I really like to do this when I use these big loaves of bread for like subs and then you can make the bread that you remove into like croutons just by baking it in the oven for a different recipe or a salad. But now I'm brushing on a fourth a cup of balsamic vinegar. Just brush it on both 
both sides. And if you're not a balsamic vinegar fan, you don't have to add it. Next, I'm going to be brushing on a fourth a cup of Italian dressing. Any Italian dressing will really work well. Next, I'm going to be adding on some iceberg lettuce. I'm just adding it onto one side of the sub. Then I'm going to add on sliced tomatoes. I am seasoning the tomatoes with just a little dash of salt and pepper. That really makes tomatoes taste a lot better, especially if they're not like fresh homegrown tomatoes. I'm adding about seven slices of Swiss cheese on the other side of the sub. And for the meat that I am using today, I'm just using some smoked turkey. I just placed that over the cheese. I'm also going to be using honey ham, but you could use like salami, you could use pepperoni, you could use pastrami, really anything would work in these subs. But now that the bacon is to the crispiness that I like it to be, I'm just removing it to a plate lined with paper towels, and I'll place that bacon over the top of the ham. After you add the bacon on, it is now time to add the boiled eggs and I have this egg cutter and I really like it. I'll have it linked below for you guys if you don't have one but I'm just placing the egg slices over the tomato and I am seasoning the egg with a little dash of salt and pepper. That will make the egg super good. Just place the sandwich together like this and then slice the sandwich into individual subs and then you could serve this easy dinner up. Let me tell you this is not your average boring bland sub that that you will just get tired of after a couple bites. This has so much crispiness from the bacon. There is so much flavor and like the most perfect textures in this sub. Now we're making these Southwest chicken wraps and they are next level. I have a sheet pan right here lined with parchment paper and I have my crispy chicken tenders. I'm just laying about seven crispy chicken tenders on my sheet pan and I'll bake them according to the package instructions. I did like the Tyson brand. I thought these were pretty good. Now that they are out of the oven and cooled down, I am just cutting them into smaller pieces like this. Now I am going to set them to the side. We're working on the Southwest dressing now. So into this bowl, I added in about a cup and a half of mayonnaise. Next, go ahead and add in a half a cup of salsa, followed by a half a cup of milk, and then three tablespoons of taco seasoning, then one teaspoon of cumin. This makes a lot of Southwest dressing. Give it a good whisk just like this until it is well combined. Now to assemble these wraps, I have large burrito-sized tortillas right here. Just place one on a plate, and now I'm sprinkling a little bit of shredded Mexican style cheese over the top. Place some of your crispy chicken over the cheese. Next, I'm drizzling a little bit of Southwest dressing on the top. You could use however much or however little Southwest dressing you would like. Now add some black beans on, followed by lettuce, corn, and then I'm adding some diced tomatoes, and then roll this up and you could serve your wraps up. These wraps are so easy to throw together. You could add basically any ingredients you have on hand in to these wraps. They are so delicious and during the warmer months of the year, I absolutely love making wraps for my family just because they're so simple and so, so good. Now we're making these ham salad sandwiches. So to get them started on my cutting board, I'm dicing one yellow onion. I'm also slicing two ribs of celery. Over to this medium sized bowl, I'm adding the onion and celery right into the bowl. Next, go ahead and add in one pound of diced ham. This is just pre-diced ham. Next, add in three fourths cup of mayonnaise followed by two tablespoons of relish. This is dill relish, but you could also use sweet relish if you prefer more of like a sweet flavor. Then I added in a tablespoon of yellow mustard, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Give this a really good stir, then you could serve this up. Also, I want to help you out a little bit this summer, so last week I created this ebook with 25 of my favorite no-bake slash no-cook recipes. I also made it completely free for you all. I have the link to access it below this video. I just really can't wait for you to see it. We served ours 
was in a hamburger bun with a slice of lettuce and tomato and then we added a scoop of that ham salad this is so good that ham salad filling is like so rich and delicious tasting it really is good if you've never made ham salad before I definitely recommend it and I made it on a day that was like about 95 degrees outside so this was the perfect no cook dinner to make on that hot day I know some of you guys are even having even warmer weather where you are at we served this with funyuns on the side we haven't had funyuns in such a long time I know everybody is going through different things, so from the bottom of my heart, I really hope you're doing okay today, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.